Hello guys and welcome back to Custom Gamer. My name is Daz and this is the show where we talk about level design while playing cool maps. Today I'm playing a new release called Rising Water by Setin. I found this on Planet Philip just the other day. I hesitate to call it a full map as it's essentially just one kind of gameplay area that the player has to escape from. But it's a pretty interesting nugget of game design. Uh, it has its issues. Uh, the map isn't quite built properly. There's like cube maps missing and things like that. And there's a couple of niggles that I really didn't like about it, but overall I think it's quite a cool little piece to look at. And I think with some tweaking it could be really, really cool as part of a larger release. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so the premise is that Gordon, in a fit of automotive insanity, has driven his jeep into a pit full of rising water, hence the map name. Now the cool thing about this pit is that the water slowly damages the player and slowly rises, so forces the player to move upwards. Uh, we've seen this in a couple of other maps in Half-Life 2. Uh, Jim Partridge's Daylight springs instantly to mind. That was a really nice take on the uh, rising water motif here. So the issues I have with this map is that while the brushwork and displacement work is nice, I mean the map looks nice, unfortunately the cube maps aren't built properly, which is a real shame, it hurts the visuals a lot. But the main issue is that it's really, really hard to find any distinguishable landmarks. Like, it's all just caves and stalagmites, stalactites. There's nothing that really sticks out as like a landmark, like, okay, I'm here, I understand this space. And uh, if I fall down, which inevitably will happen on your first playthrough probably, you can get your bearings very, very quickly. This is one of the biggest problems I had with the map, is that because it all looks so samey, if you do fall, it's really hard to work out where you should go to get back on track. Together with the slowly damaging water, it gets very, very frustrating as a result, which is uh, a shame. The other thing that... It's, it's more of a niggle on my part, I don't really know if this would bother other people, but the fiction of the level says that there are leeches in the water, and yet when you jump into the water, you expect leeches to kill you in a couple of seconds flat, and of course you get the sound effect and everything like that, but in this case... You can actually stay in the water for a fairly decent amount of time and it only does like a couple of damage every second so it's not a complete failure state if you fall in the water there is time to save yourself which which i really really like but i just dislike the whole leeches uh, analogy funnily enough i think the the kind of fix for this would actually make more sense is something like perhaps the buggy knocked into an electricity pylon on the way past and the electricity pylon has fallen into the water because then you can have a shock damage type instead of leeches you know I think it, that would just make more sense and you'd actually be able to add some more detail to the map like the light pole at the top with kind of electricity pylons dangling down and again that would serve as a landmark to actually orient the player if they fall down as you can see this is where I miss a jump and I fall back down here and it's, I found it really, really difficult to actually work out where I was in the level. And because of the rising water as well, the level starts to look different, even the areas you've already been to. So, again, really, really strong landmarks would help a lot here. Like, perhaps if there'd been some kind of structure at the top as well, which had started to fall in and kind of rested against various areas as it was filling with water. So you could kind of tell you know, the depth that you're at just by looking at some visuals in the map around you. Because right now I'm completely lost. I don't know where to go to get back on track. This map also does something else which is pretty cool. So you've got Alex at the top where the water's coming in and she'll actually shoot ant lines for you if you draw them out into the open. She doesn't quite have a decent enough angle kind of line of sight for for it to be really, really helpful, but it's a nice idea nonetheless. I think it would have been nice if she'd actually walk around the edge of the pit to actually get decent kind of line of sight on ant lines for you, depending on where the player is. You could have, you could set up some triggers around the sides, so when the player walks into one, she'll move around and you know have a better line of sight to help you out. Because there are quite a few ant lines here, and you only have a gravity gun. Once you get to the end, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's an interesting kind of nugget of gameplay. It has its issues, but, you know, it's always nice to look at these things and see, you know, what can we learn from this. 
what things were done well, what things weren't, and how can we improve this. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. It's a short one, but uh, I'll hopefully be able to put out some more content over the weekend. Uh, I will be live streaming tonight. What is it, the 4th? Uh, doing some Half-Life 2 maps and possibly some Quake stuff as well. And probably another stream on Saturday for the Honey map pack, which is coming out for Quake. So I'll see you next time.